Tonight on 7 News, target Trump, the former president, survives a second assassination attempt while playing golf. Not guilty, a couple cleared of murdering a teenage mum so they could keep her baby. Exclusive, a frightening twist in Sydney's asbestos nightmare. Families exposed for months and authorities sitting on their hands. Our politicians argue about housing as the crisis gets worse by the day. Aussie Elizabeth Debicki honours the memory of Diana as she walks away with an Emmy. And the Roosters' biggest gun is back just when they need every weapon they have. Live from Sydney, 7 News with Mark Ferguson and Angela Cox. Good evening. Donald Trump has survived a second assassination attempt. This time, the gunman was stopped before he could take a shot at the former president. The lone sniper was hiding in bushes at Trump's Florida golf course, ready to ambush him, when the Secret Service spotted his weapon and opened fire. His golf course, tonight a crime scene. The former president whisked home under guard to his nearby Mar-a-Lago estate, as the man intent on taking his life, Ryan Wesley Ralph stares down an FBI interrogation. This is about good versus evil. Online posts paint a picture of a man in his 50s and highly critical of Donald Trump. A list of prior run-ins with the law. Lately, he was committed to enlisting foreign fighters in Ukraine. Uh, my initial goal was to come and fight. And the FBI says fighting was his goal today. The U.S. Secret Service personnel opened fire on a gunman located near the property line. That line, the Trump International Golf Course. The Republican nominee was between holes five and six when the advanced Secret Service details spotted the threat some 300 metres from the former president and opened fire. He was able to spot this rifle barrel sticking out of the fence and immediately engaged that individual. Trump was bundled into a golf cart and carried away to the clubhouse where he was locked down. The gunman's high-powered weapons seen here with backpacks and a camera. I think one has like a rifle. As he made a run for it. Fortunately, we were able to locate a witness that came to us and said, hey, I saw the guy running out of the bushes and they spotted the vehicle and pulled it over. Confirming his safety, Donald Trump pictured smiling, a thumbs up with Speaker Mike Johnson before declaring, nothing will slow me down, I will never surrender. He's now survived two attempts on his life in just two months. What is clear is that President Trump is safe. That is a good thing. I probably took a bullet to the head because of the things that they say about me. Vice President Harris wishing her rival well, reiterating, Violence has no place in America. Now, the vice president's message of calm, it has echoed right across the United States and indeed the world. But one person who is not heeding that message tonight, US billionaire Elon Musk. Quite bizarrely, he has now responded to this attempted assassination attempt on Donald Trump with this online post. And no one is even trying to assassinate Biden and Kamala. Now, that has been widely interpreted as insightful language, goading, it would appear, the aggrieved in a country, of course, awash with high-powered weapons. Now, US President Joe Biden, look, he has once again recommitted every available resource to the US Secret Service and uh, their attempts to now try and protect both of these candidates in the final weeks of this election campaign as Donald Trump now prepares to return to the campaign trail in the coming hours. David Woywood with the latest from the US. One of the state's most disturbing murder mysteries remains just that tonight after two key suspects were found not guilty of killing teenager Amber Haig. The young mother vanished 22 years ago. Her son shrieked loudly at court today as the verdict came down. The body of Amber Haig has never been found, so the case against her accused killers was circumstantial. The verdict I must enter in respect of both Robert Jeeves and Anne Jeeves is not guilty. Amber's son Royce heard screaming shortly after the verdict. I thank um, counsel and their instructing solicitors for their uh, careful. He was only five months old when his mother disappeared. No comment. Royce did not wait for his biological father, Robert Jeeves, to walk free from court. Jeeves's other son, with wife Anne, left shortly after. Yeah. You think your mum and dad did this to Amber? I do, yes. The couple had always maintained they did not. Amber was living with them when she disappeared. But in 2022, police received new evidence. Police! 
and arrested them. The prosecution said they had motive. They wanted custody of Royce. We drove her down to Campbelltown. That was in 2002, and the 19-year-old hasn't been seen since. The trial was told of a teenager who was kind-hearted, desperate to be loved, yet troubled. A photocopy of a suicide note. Have you any idea of where she may be? Oh, she's in Sydney somewhere. So once again, the case of Amber Hay remains unsolved. Robert and Anne Jeeves cannot be retried under our double jeopardy laws unless there's fresh and compelling evidence to charge them again. Do you think we'll ever find out what happened to Amber Hay? No, unless there's a body. Leonie Ryan, 7 News. The drama's only escalating for troubled former TV star Andrew O'Keefe, who's had a run-in with a paparazzi cameraman and has been arrested by police. The clash came after news broke of an apparent drug overdose on the weekend. What started as routine reporting to Rose Bay Police to meet his bail conditions soon turned nasty. Big weekend, mate. As the other fella. The former TV host and the freelance cameraman giving as good as they got. You're degenerate, mate. You're a f- degenerate. That's what you are. You're degenerate, man. Huh? Huh? Keep it nice. We'll keep it nice. If you want to be a bunny. Especially when an ugly reference to O'Keefe's domestic violence charges was thrown at him. Make a living out of... Do you want to spit at someone? Leech you off other people. Go and abuse some women, mate. It followed news O'Keefe had to be revived by paramedics in the early hours of Saturday morning after an apparent drug overdose. He was taken to St Vincent's Hospital and later discharged and was certainly showing no signs of that today. Oh, good on you, mate. Get to it, mate. You're very busy there. Then, when O'Keefe returned to the police station, he says to make a formal complaint about the cameraman, he was arrested, accused of breaching his bail. Amy Clements, 7 News. A brawl at a core stadium last night has left one man in hospital and another with severe facial injuries. The bust-up followed the Sea Eagles' upset win over the Bulldogs in the NRL finals, with security forced to step in. Auburn detectives are investigating and calling for anyone with vision of the fight to contact Crime Stoppers. The next stage of Labor's plan to build 1.2 million homes in five years has hit a roadblock in the Senate tonight. The coalition rejecting two pieces of legislation, leaving Anthony Albanese, Albanese to negotiate with the Greens. A paddock, soon to be a suburb, with 17 low-cost and public houses, the first of 14,000 from the government's Housing Australia Future Fund. Yep, the Australian dream. It is. <laughs> As the government's two other proposed housing schemes become a political nightmare, stuck in the Senate. We are building. The Coalition and the Greens have been blocking. The first, the help to buy scheme, the government providing up to 40% of the equity so 40,000 low to medium income families can own a home. This is a scheme where the government comes in as the bank of mum and dad. The second scheme, build to rent, offering tax incentives for developers to put new properties on the rental market. The coalition opposes both. Australians don't want to co-own a home with the government. They don't want Anthony Albanese sitting at the kitchen table. It's time for all parties to put aside entrenched political positions. Little evidence of that, though, as the Greens now have the casting votes and accuse the government of refusing to negotiate over their demands to slash negative gearing and other tax breaks for investors. It's clear that the Prime Minister doesn't like the Greens, but it's time to uh, act like an adult. The key is the uh, no alition getting out of the way. Well, I'm sorry, Mr Prime Minister. But that's not actually how democracy works. Demanding he become a consensus builder. Mark Riley, 7 News. Nine months since the start of Sydney's asbestos crisis, a new batch of the toxic material has been found in mulch in Western Sydney. Locals are angry, saying they need more protection. Along the Prospect Highway, just metres from homes, garden beds fenced off since January. 
And outside the gates where new mulch is being laid, locals have made some alarming discoveries. It's everywhere. Piece after piece of suspicious material found this month. It's just sitting there. There's a fence around it. How's that going to stop it from blowing around or moving? In May, asbestos was piled up near Lisa's home. There was just a big pile with some rope around it and a sign that said asbestos. From the EPA, Transport for New South Wales is continuing work to remediate the site, which is not accessible to the public, but in reality, it's right next to a path. I mean, come on, whacking up a a rickety old fence and saying asbestos here, uh, you know, fend for yourself, not good enough. Citywide, around 88% of contaminated mulch sites have been cleared. 12%, though, still have asbestos sitting there. We'll get onto it as soon as possible. Having a rope around it is not a plan for changing it. You need to change it out. All the while, the Minister says the EPA is now finalising its investigation, building a case to bring to court. We previously revealed the cost of the clean-up to taxpayers is up to $100 million so far and environmental crimes can take years to prosecute. I would hope that that happens sooner rather than later. Serena Andaloro, 7 News. The family of a 12-year-old girl who took her own life after bullying at an Inner West private school is vowing her story won't be swept under the carpet. They say they complained about the harassment, but the college did little to help. This is Charlotte O'Brien, 12 years old, young, smiling, happy. Last week, she took her own life. Charlotte was in Year 7 at Santa Sabina College and it's at school and online that her family says she was bullied. These issues cannot be swept under the carpet. I will not let my daughter's memory be swept under the carpet either. The father of one of Charlotte's friends speaking out on radio this morning. When we were children, we went home after school and we were safe. Today, it just it's relentless. His daughter was one of the last people to hear from the Year 7 student. Charlotte messaging, I'm sorry. Sorry for what? Answer, please. I want to know you are all right. She repeatedly pleaded, but silence. Very proud of my daughter. But, uh, yeah, heartbreak for this family. We've all got a responsibility um, and to, to check in on, on the welfare of our children. It is important that we don't shy away from having conversations around suicide. Charlotte's parents says the issue of bullying was raised multiple times with teachers here at Santa Sabina College. It was investigated and the girls questioned, denied any wrongdoing. The allegations weren't taken any further. I'm sure that they want answers and I can completely understand that. From the school principal today, the main priority of the college is to support and care for our students. Little comfort for Charlotte's family. Taylor Aiken, 7 News. And children in need can call the Kids Helpline on 1800 55 1800. A manhunt is underway for a driver and passenger who led police on a lengthy pursuit through Sydney South. The driver failed to stop just before, just after being flagged for dangerous driving. Officers pursued them for 27 kilometres from Waterfall to Alfords Point, where road spikes were deployed, and onto Peakhurst. The car stopped, but the suspects ran from the scene. The ABC is in damage control tonight, launching an investigation of its own reporting and deleting an online video that depicted Australian soldiers firing on unarmed Afghan civilians. Channel 7 Spotlight revealing the clip's audio was doctored with extra gunshots added in. After four tours fighting the Taliban... Personally, I killed seven. Retired Commando Heston Russell's now fighting the ABC. Watching... You know, this taxpayer-funded organisation going to the lengths of altering footage, adding gunshots. The national broadcaster forced to remove this online video, a clip Russell says was doctored to look like he was shooting at unarmed civilians. Literally made shit up. In the original helmet cam footage, Russell says it was one of his team who fired a warning shot at an insurgent. As the man runs into a compound and picks up what looks like a weapon, Russell on the right, gives the order to open fire. But in the ABC clip, the single warning shot becomes six. It completely misrepresents what those soldiers were going through that day. The ABC says an error has been identified and it's seeking more information on how this occurred. We've trashed 
uh, our Afghanistan veterans reputation. The story published in the middle of a defamation trial. Russell successfully suing the ABC for depicting him as a war criminal. A senior ABC insider describes the doctored clip as a five-star stuff-up and they say there's a lot of finger-pointing going on within the organisation today with hard questions being asked about who's to blame coming from the very top. If the ABC want to try and say this is an error, we have more evidence of what they've been up to. Rob Scott, 7 News. The comedy of Ricky Gervais has become a bizarre headline in a Sydney court case as three men fight charges of performing Nazi salutes outside the Jewish Museum. Their lawyers claim they were referencing the popular comedian and made a joke in poor taste. Outside the Sydney Jewish Museum, three workmates walk by, then raise an arm in an apparent brief Nazi salute, laughing as they left, but when security called police, officers weren't sharing the joke. All three of you are under arrest for offensive conduct. The trio also charged with knowingly displaying a Nazi symbol. No, we were all just joking around. We didn't even, re- we didn't even rile yeah, lies where you, we you guys- Today, lawyers argued tradies Anthony Mitchell, Daniel Muston and Ryan Marshall were passing the museum on a lunch break when they made a poorly timed joke. Hamas had launched its attack on Israel days earlier. Did you intend to cause offence? <laughs> Not at all, mate. I would like to apologise to some people that were affected, but a joke is a joke. My client is not a racist and he's not a person who shares anti-Semitic beliefs. Saying their actions were referencing this. No one's calling their kid Adolf nowadays. Ricky Gervais' stand-up routine officially tended into court evidence. You don't hear the teacher doing the register. Brad here, Angelina here, Adolf here. (laughs) One of the questions the court now needs to answer is that even if it finds the act offensive, does it amount to an offence under law? We'll find that out when the case returns here in just over a month. Andrew Denny, 7 News. Aussie star Elizabeth Debicki has been crowned Best Supporting Actress at today's Emmy Awards for her role as Princess Diana, a part she called a privilege and a gift. The King of Cool also made a comeback as Hollywood celebrated some legends of the past. Father and son hosts reigning over TV royalty. We've all done salacious tell-alls with the BBC to get back at a lying, cheating ex like Elizabeth Debicki in The Crown. But the Aussie had the last laugh, taking home her first ever Emmy for her portrayal of Princess Diana in The Crown. Playing this part based on this unparalleled, incredible human being has been my great privilege. Uh, It has been a gift. Thank you so very much. But the night belonged to... Shogun. The Japanese period piece cleaned up, setting a new record, 18 Emmys for one season. Arigato gozaimasu. Thank you so much. Baby Reindeer, the popular and controversial runaway hit with six gongs for the night. Follow your heart and the rest will fall into place. The Bear and Emmys Beast, 11 awards. Thank you so much, my heart is just beating... Right out of his chest. The Emmys is all about celebrating the big hits of today, but tonight's show features a bit of nostalgia with a look back on some fan favourites. Ron Howard and Henry Winkler reuniting to celebrate the 50th anniversary of Happy Days and a quarter century anniversary for political drama The West Wing. Unlike today, where storylines can be plucked right off the news, Storylines that writers would have deemed a bit far-fetched, if not utterly ridiculous, 25 years ago. Like a girl from Melbourne, the daughter of ballet dancers, bringing a princess back to life. In Hollywood, Miley Hogan, 7 News. Time to check the forecast now with Grace Fitzgibbon. Grace, barely a cloud in the sky today. Good evening, Mark and Ange. Yes, it certainly was a gorgeous day. Spring in full swing and for some, so too were the allergies. The pollen count was set at moderate today and a warning to hay fever sufferers. It is expected to climb higher from Wednesday onwards. Before all that sunshine, we had a fairly chilly start, a low of just 7 degrees in the city, well below the September average, before warming to a top of 20. That cold start was felt right across the state today. Frosty temperatures in Parks and Orange this morning, minus 3, even cooler in 
Goulburn with minus six. It was windy along the parts of the coast too and will remain so. Tomorrow there's a warning for strong winds from Coffs Harbour down to Eden. The good news is it's only getting warmer this week. I'll have your full forecast soon. Grace, thank you. Stay with us, plenty more to come in 7 News. Next, airlines go head-to-head -head in a battle for your travel dollars. More flights out of Sydney and new destinations. What's on offer? Plus, an impatient driver pays the price in our west. Bikey Life gets the Hollywood treatment. A notorious outlaw gang slammed over this promo video. A discount chemists as cheap as they claim. A 7 News investigation, that's later. And a criminal does a runner from court, handcuffs and all. Welcome back. Detectives are on the hunt for a firebug who targeted the old Annandale police station in Sydney's inner west. Molotov cocktails were thrown at two entryways to the Heritage listed building last night. Firefighters prevented the flame spreading and there was only minor damage. It hasn't been used as a police station since the 1980s. An impatient driver has avoided serious injury in this crash in Western Sydney caught on dash cam, inching forward while trying to turn right. They veered straight into the path of an oncoming ute. It happened at a Minchinbury intersection at lunchtime. Paramedics checked three patients, taking one to hospital. Police believe they've caught the culprits of a crime spree in Sydney's west. They've charged four men over the torching of a Lakemba cafe in July, extraditing one suspect from South Australia. The men, believed to have links to organised crime, are also accused of forcing their way into a home and terrorising a woman and two young girls at gunpoint in Prairie Wood a month later. All four have been refused bail. After Bali, it's the most popular place on the planet for Aussie travellers and Sydney siders will soon have another option to get to New Zealand. Jetstar is launching direct flights to Hamilton, the gateway to Rotorua and the giant Bay of Plenty. We share Pavlova, a crowded house and an unbreakable bond. We're very close cousins and uh, there's a lot of traffic to and from between here and New Zealand across the Tasman, so, you know, we are... Uh, forever intertwined. After Bali, more Australians head to New Zealand than anywhere else on earth. Auckland, Wellington, Christchurch, Queenstown. But from next year, Jetstar will do something different. Direct flights to Hamilton. A lot of people during COVID moved down towards that catchment, so we think it's the perfect opportunity for Hamilton to launch international flying. Jetstar's also spreading its wings to Vanuatu, flying Sydney to Port Vila from December. But the big news, our first ever take of Turkish Airlines, flying Sydney, Istanbul, with connections to 110 airports across Europe. That starts in December too. It's going to open up a whole new world for, again, for travellers and tourists wanting to get to Europe. And again, competition uh, uh, against the Middle East carriers and uh, a different way to, uh, to get to Europe. All this as Qatar and Air India look to double their slots at Sydney. World oil prices are also coming down, which is making it cheaper at the Bowser. But is it going to make it cheaper in the air. Generally when oil prices go up, airfares go up, but when oil prices go down, it takes a little bit longer for prices to be passed on. Hopefully somewhere in the pipeline. Tom Saker, 7 News. Luxury boats, private jets, if this video is to be believed, bikies are living the high life. Next, the Premier hits out of the Comancheros over their latest recruitment drive. Tearing up a runway on takeoff, is this what happens when a plane does a burnout? What Sydney could look like in the decades to come, the brightest minds brought together to redesign our city. And ahead in sport, Willie Mason's here with some worrying words for Josh Addo Carr on his Bulldogs future. Welcome back. They're not exactly known for being media friendly, but the Comanchero Outlaw Motorcycle Gang has recorded a Hollywood style promotional video hoping to recruit new members. It shows bikies living the high life, but police say don't believe everything you see. An apparent day in the life of a self-confessed outlaw. This flashy video shows members of the Comanchero bikey gang with expensive accessories, luxury boats and even a private plane. That's a clever bit of marketing, but the footage that we see is uh, nothing 
Uh, nothing like that at all. I've seen them in jail and in handcuffs. A production crew was called in to film this year's annual run with around 100 bikies marking the 40th anniversary of the Milpera massacre. The five minute clip uploaded to YouTube, the heavy police presence carefully edited out. The ride was held in Canberra where unlike New South Wales, it's still legal for bikies to gather and wear their colours. They do look weird though, sort of a weird organisation. I can't kind of baffles me why you'd want to join. But that's the purpose of the video, to recruit. And even though it's promoting a criminal group, the government doesn't have the power to take it down. It's up to YouTube to enforce their own terms of reference and decide whether this lives up to their terms and conditions. In the past five years, the bikey gang has lost a third of its members. Many are now behind bars and others have simply stepped away. Once you put that Comanchero vest on, or any AMCG vest on, you become a target of our Natasha Squarey, 7 News. Hasty repairs are underway after a plane tore up parts of the main runway at Perth Airport. The Qantas flight was about to take off for Singapore yesterday afternoon when parts of the tarmac were sent flying. Maintenance crews got to work repairing the damage which caused one other flight to be diverted. At least seven people have died and several others are missing as Storm Boris continues to lash central and eastern Europe. Dams burst in Poland, swamping streets, forcing thousands to evacuate their homes. The flooding has triggered a state of emergency in the Slovakian capital, Bratislava, while Austria's capital, Vienna, has been declared a disaster zone. Security cameras have captured wild scenes at a US courthouse, a criminal making a run for it, handcuffs and all. He'd just been convicted of assaulting a child and tried to escape custody but didn't get far. The man made his way through the corridors and out the front door, but seconds later he tripped and fell and was pinned to the ground by two jurors. We've been given a glimpse of Sydney's future with new look housing that could be coming to a street near you. It's part of an international competition to help speed up the planning process. Houses like these could soon call Sydney home after a global call for bold and innovative ways to reimagine our suburbs. 15 architecture firms have answered from Sydney to London to India. We've gone through that with a fine tooth comb. There's been a jury of five in, uh, experts. Take a look for me. Which one do you like the best? Personally, Ooh, that's a nice one. I'd say that one. Looks like its own little community. Very friendly. Still like looks like boxes, but uh, it's a good box. The goal of the state government's competition is to design terrace houses and mid-rise apartments for the 21st century. And we think we can get more homes in our existing suburbs through this work. The winning designs to help councils fast track approvals. You can expect major changes, but we need major changes. Supply is a major part of that jigsaw puzzle and we've got to get on with it. The pattern book concept has been under construction for a year. Final designs won't be decided until November. So in typical Sydney fashion, it could be a long time yet before these dream homes become reality. As for the lag, the government admits it's been part of the problem. Too long to get answers to investors, to developers to get their buildings up and running. Amy Clements, 7 News. An American gaming champion in a showdown with an Aussie YouTuber still to come going ape. The court case that has fans flying in from around the world. Is the Royal Rift easing promising signs on Prince Harry's birthday? Tributes to a music icon, the Jackson 5 loses one of its founding members. And in sport, a sight for sore eyes. The Roosters' chief enforcer back for a heavyweight battle. Will it be his last? Curtis, the husband of former Sydney publicist Roxy Jasenko, has struck gold in Singapore after his release from jail here for insider trading. He invested a quarter of a million dollars in AI data company Firmus Technologies. After another round of capital raising, his stake is set to soar to nearly $450 million. It's been dubbed the Donkey Kong lawsuit, a defamation trial between a US arcade champion and an Aussie YouTuber. The case is sending shockwaves through the gaming world. In the golden age of arcades, 
Billy Mitchell was the master who conquered Kong. World record headquarters can help you. Barreling his way to multiple Donkey Kong world records, the first to claim a perfect game in Pac-Man. When you want your name written into history, you have to pay the price. But now the Florida native has a new score to settle in a Brisbane courtroom. Arguing local YouTuber Carl Jobst defamed him in a 2021 video which alleged Mitchell's lawsuit against a US critic led to his suicide. These claims and that story are demonstrably false. Mr. Jobst is relying on a truth defence, while the US gaming icon is seeking reputational damages of close to half a million dollars. This the tipping point in a four-year feud between the pair, including accusations Billy Mitchell cheated his way to Donkey Kong high scores. For a time, Guinness World Records agreed, scrubbing his achievements before reinstating them after legal action. There is such a huge interest in this unique case. Fans and gaming commentators packed one entire courtroom. Some have travelled 14 hours from the US to be here for the six-day trial. A multiplayer defamation battle with both fighting to avoid an expensive game over. Garth Burley, 7 News. Taking a look at finance now, the ASX 200 has closed up 22 points at an all-time high. Shares in mining company Alcoa soared after news it's selling its Saudi Arabian joint venture. One Australian dollar is buying 67.27 US cents. Michael Jackson's brother Tito has died of a suspected heart attack. Tito was a guitarist, singer and a dancer in his own right, best known as one of the founding members of the Jackson Five. He was 70 years old. Some are hoping it's a sign tensions may be thawing. The royal family publicly wishing Prince Harry a happy 40th birthday online. The Prince and Princess of Wales also extended their well wishes. It's the first time the family has acknowledged Harry's birthday on social media in three years. Perhaps at best this might be another sort of olive branch, uh, a digital olive branch from the king. Harry celebrated the day with his wife and children at home in California. With their flashy signs, discount chemists promise big savings, but are they really cheaper? We've compared prices to save you the effort. That's coming up after sport. Plus, he's not hurt, just lost. A koala takes a wrong turn and winds up in a hospital. Don't miss that story soon on 7 News. But now Mel is here with sport. And Mel, the roosters, they are hurting. Yes, they are. Hello to you both. That hiding in Penrith left some scars, but they're determined to hit back against Manly. Details up next. Plus, Willie Mason's here with a grim warning for Josh Adokar and lavish praise for the Prince of Penrith. And the near-flawless drive that stunned the F1 world, Australia's Oscar Piastri tops the podium again. Welcome back with their chief enforcer back for his last hurrah. The Roosters are primed for a vastly improved performance against Manly on Saturday night. The intimidating presence of Jared Waria Hargreaves was sorely missed in the heavy loss to Penrith. If the Roosters are to make the grand final, they'll now have to do it the hard way, starting with the Seagulls. They're a dangerous footy team. They've got strike all over the field. Uh, make it hurt you from anywhere. The tricolours were simply out-muscled against the Panthers, so the return of Jared Waria Hargreaves couldn't come quick enough. The outgoing Rooster has spent seven of the past eight weeks suspended. His teammates now desperately need him to see out his career on the field. He's probably disappointed that he stepped over it a couple of times and been suspended and hurt the team, but it's, a, it's coming from a good place for him. Like he's, We need that intimidation factor. Jared not, not only brings out himself, but I think he brings that out of the forward pack around him as well. Sand and Smith had a final start riddled with errors, but his teammates are backing the young half. We've got all the confidence and belief in Sando and you know, sometimes things don't, don't go your way, but it doesn't define you as a player or, or, or as a person. Jason Saab early to training in Brookvale this morning following the Seagulls win over the Bulldogs. His coach revealing he has a chance to make his return from an ankle injury. He's certainly moving a lot better, Dan. Um, but you yeah, I, I couldn't say 100%. He actually, hasn't actually done any sort of um, running as such. Jaleesa Raps, 7 News. 
Well, it's Monday, Mad Monday, if you like, so that must mean Willie Mason is uh, in the house with us. Willie, always a pleasure to see you. Sad news, though, with the <sighs> doggies just bowing out. Absolute heartbreak against the Sea Eagles. Can we have a, a word on them and the fans, a positive word? Oh, absolutely gutted, because we had it. We had, the, we, had, we had the game, and I'll, that one play when bang, 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 Trebojevic, Kohler down the sideline, it's very hard to get over. Yeah, no doubt. But uh, be proud, just be super proud, Bulldogs fans, of what they've done all year. What was a real shame for the Bulldogs was how the season ended when we're talking about Josh Addo Carr. What happens to the Fox? Yeah, it's, 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 not a good, it's not a good position for Fox at the moment. Me knowing the club, where the club's heading, the culture that they're setting, this is not a part of their plan. And they love Fox. I love Fox personally. I think he's a great person. He's just, he's just, he's, he's just messed up. And I said it with, with the Latrell thing. It's the people you hang out with. You know, like 10 years ago, if I'm in a predicament like that and, and, I'm, and just say I'm in, I'm in that position, they go, don't touch that. Mm. Don't touch that. You've got two or three weeks max, four weeks max, and you can go whatever you want. You can go to Vegas. You can go to Mexico. You can do what you want. Right? But just not right now. So it's just a, a lesson on hanging out with better people. We're just going to go straight to the nominee now for yeah. the prestigious award of the Willie M. Medal. Who gets your vote? <sighs> I can't go past the Prince of Penrith. <laughs> Nathan <laughs> Cleary. Fair. Nathan Cleary is outstanding. Um, he's been out for three or four weeks. The shoulder injury, I know a few mates that have had that, they've been out for eight to ten weeks. He comes back in three or four. He comes out, sets the standard, and he's on another level. Everyone else has to catch up. He's uh, definitely, definitely the, the Prince of Penrith. Love it. Thank you. Great to see you as always. Thank you. We'll switch codes now to AFL and on Friday night all eyes will be on the Swans as they take on Port Adelaide in a huge preliminary final. Matty Carmichael is with John Longmire. Thanks Mel. John Longmire, preliminary final week. What do you do to make sure you absolutely nail the opportunity this week? Uh, we concentrate on our day by day preparation. So that's what we're doing at the moment. Um, great to be involved. Really looking forward to it but we really concentrate on our day by day and our training and hopefully that takes, you know, the result takes care of itself. A week off after that amazing atmosphere that was in the ground here for the Giants game, do they remember that energy and does it help you this week? Yeah sure, our players are pumped you know, after the last game it was incredible you know this year our supporters here at the SCG have been amazing uh, we're lucky enough to play a home prelim final um, and we really hope that they're in full voice again it's incredible the whole place was shaking last game. Eight years since you've beaten Port Adelaide does that matter this week? Uh, look they're a great team and they have been for a long time Kenny and, and the Port Adelaide footy club have been awesome opponents and we've only played them here once over the last six games so um, we played well against them we just didn't quite get over the line so hopefully this week we'll concentrate on what we need to and uh, have a really strong performance. Thank you, John. And we keep Ken Hinckley away from the Swans players this week too, Mel. That is a good shout. Thanks, Matty. Well, days after being told he's playing second fiddle to Lando Norris at McLaren, Oscar Piastri delivered the drive of his F1 career. The Aussie held off Charles Leclerc to win in Azerbaijan. Paris. On the penultimate lap. Contact between Perez and Sainz into the wall. Disaster. The crash triggered a virtual safety car, allowing Australia's F1 gun to complete a drive as flawless as a supermodel in cruise control. Oscar Piastri wins the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Lovely job, Oscar. Yes. To hang on for, for so long, um, yeah, with, with very, very few mistakes, I think. Definitely one of my, my best drives. The piece de resistance came on lap 20. Down the inside, late on the brakes, makes the move stick. From there, Piastri kept pole sitter Charles Leclerc at bay. Piastri sees him coming, defends that line. Leading home the Ferrari and George Russell's Mercedes for his second win of the season. Told by McLaren that teammate Lando Norris's title challenge was the priority, Piastri's race performance demanded a role reversal. I'm happy uh, I helped him out. A good result for us as a team and Oscar winning, I'm even happier for, for McLaren to be on top in the constructors. The results like this definitely weren't possible 12 months to go for myself, so um, it's a, a massive team effort. Yay! Nick Markham, seven years. Yeah, Oscar, certainly number one at the moment. We love seeing an Aussie flying in absolute elite rare air as well. Going big on the world stage. Yes, he is. Thanks, Mel. Thank you. Despite the weather warming up, visits to the pharmacy are still frequent for cold and flu medication. But are the discount chemists any cheaper than Coles or Woolworths? We compared everyday items with those also selling online to see who offered the best deal. From cut price chemists to supermarket shelves, the options are endless for over-the-counter medication. I usually head to chemist warehouse because it's 
I don't know, there's usually a sale on what I need. We did a price check at Chemist Warehouse and Priceline Pharmacy, major supermarkets, Coles and Woolworths, as well as eBay. On our shopping list, vitamin C, a probiotic, Panadol and cold and flu. People are struggling to afford their medicines. We regularly hear of people who are rationing medicines. For 300 Synovus tablets, the price difference ranged from $18.50 at Woolworths down to $7.25 on special at Coles. eBay also under $10 and free postage. 40 probiotic tablets were $14 cheaper on eBay compared to the major supermarkets. Chemist Warehouse and Priceline only offered a pack of 60. For Panadol Rapid, prices were pretty consistent, only a dollar difference between all five. The cost of a 20-pack of cold and flu was slashed by Woolies and Coles. At the pharmacies, it cost more for more tablets. eBay, the dearest. When you search for Codril, the first results are pharmacy brands, which are much cheaper, $9 and free postage. But can you trust it? Safety is really important when we talk about people buying their medicine. Any over-the-counter product that's regulated by the Therapeutic Goods Administration will have an identification number on the packaging. If it doesn't, the TGA says there are no guarantees about its safety. You can go to the TGA's website and you can look up the things that you're thinking of buying and check that that brand and, and that, um, you know, that item, whatever it happens to be, is indeed a safe product for you to use. Georgia Holland, 7 News. Now, have a look at this. A koala has wandered out of the bush and into an emergency department in the state's north. Locals whipped out their phones to capture the creature a little confused after strolling into Gunnedah Hospital and ending up in a battle with the automatic doors. Before staff could call in a wildlife rescue team, the koala decided it had seen enough and strolled away. Running its own race. Absolutely. Very slowly. Now Grace is back with the full forecast. And Grace, another chilly morning tomorrow. Yes, a cool start, Ange, but I promise it will warm up. I will have your very nice looking forecast next. Tonight's 7 News headlines, Donald Trump is safe tonight, surviving the second attempt on his life within months. And former TV star Andrew O'Keefe has been caught in a war of words with a paparazzo before police arrested him for breaching his bail. Now here's Grace with the latest on Sydney's weather. Thank you, Mark and Ange. It was a beautiful, clear spring day today with no shortage of sunshine, but it didn't start out that way. We had a chilly low of 7 degrees at 6am. That's well below average before climbing to a top of 20 at midday. Right now, it's 15 degrees outside. And that cold start was felt right across the board today. Minus one at Katoomba overnight, two degrees at Badgerys Creek, and the top temperatures hovered in the low 20s for most. So what's causing those chilly lows? Well, a cold front has brushed past the south, pushing cool air in our direction, while that high pressure system on the bite is what's keeping things calm and dry for now. There is another cold front approaching forecast across the state midweek. That could bring light showers along the coastal fringe, but otherwise it's looking fairly dry this week. Let's take a look at what's in store around the capitals tomorrow. Brisbane can look forward to another sunny day, 24 degrees, a cold start for Canberra with minus one, warming to 19. Partly cloudy in Melbourne, 17. Hobart looking cloudy as well with a cool 14 degrees. 27 is the forecast top over in Perth. Here in New South Wales, some chilly minimums on the way tomorrow, but the sunshine is sticking around. Possible showers in the north, but temperatures will still hover in the low 20s. 21, the expected top at Livesmore and Coffs Harbour. A gusty day down in Threadbow with just four degrees. Let's take a look at what's in store for Sydney tomorrow. Mostly sunny with some southwesterly winds, a low of three degrees for Camden and Campbelldown, warming to 23 along the coast. Temperatures hovering 
hovering around 20 degrees. If you are on the coast, expect southerly winds of up to 30 knots turning north to northwesterly in the afternoon, 19 degrees in the water and a moderate swell of around 4 metres. Here in Sydney, another chilly morning on the way tomorrow, a low of 11 degrees, but the sunshine will warm us up. We're expecting a top of 22, possibly some light winds about as well. And this is the best part. Look at all that sunshine on the way. Wednesday, a warm 27 degrees in the city. That warmth continuing into Thursday. There are some chilly mornings on the way, though, particularly in our west, a low of 7 degrees on Friday. And the weekend shaking up to be a cracker. Clear skies and tops of 25 degrees. Andrew, Mark, I know it's only Monday, but I cannot wait for that. Absolutely. Looking good. Thank you. Now, before we go, here's a look at a special report we have for you tomorrow night. The biggest transformation to aged care in Australia's history is here. Five must-see stories over five nights, from the senior Australians living in luxury for less to revolutionary at-home care on a budget. We reveal how to set yourself and your loved ones up for A-plus aged care. Seven News at six. That is 7 News for this Monday. We'll have updates for you throughout the evening. Sunrise starts from 5.30 tomorrow from all of the 7 News team. Thanks so much for your company. Have a great night. Good night. The 7 News app will give you the news you want every minute of every day, including breaking news alerts. Download the 7 News app now.